I'm reading this morning from Matthew chapter 7. If you'd like to open there, please. Matthew 7. I'm going to read two verses. Verse 13 and verse 14 of Matthew 7, if you'll follow with me. Jesus says toward the end of his Sermon on the Mount, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter by it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and few are those who find it. There are just two ways. Just two. No more than two. There are just two destinations. There aren't three. There's not a path between those two destinations. There's not an in-between. There are just two destinations. There, there are just two kinds of pedestrians. There, there aren't many kinds of pedestrians going in many different places. There are just two kinds of pedestrians. There are just two paths. There are just two destinations. There are just two kinds of pedestrians. And you and I are either on the narrow way that goes through a straight gate, or we're on a broad way that goes through a broad gate. We are either on a narrow path that leads to life, or we're on a broad way that leads to destruction. We are either walking with the few who are on the narrow path that leads to life, or we are on the superhighway that leads to destruction with many, many other vehicles beside us and before us and behind us. The, the, the thing is as well, that, that, that we can be here today, I mean, right, right sitting next to each other. We can worship together. We can sing the same songs together for 35 minutes as we've done. We can eat the same Lord's Supper we can, we can hug the same necks when our time together is over today. We can, get, we can even get in the same car and go eat at the same restaurant today and be on different paths. Do you know that? I mean, there are folks that were listening to Jesus preach in Matthew chapter 7, some of whom were on the narrow way and some of whom were on the broad way, but they were listening to the Lord Himself speak those words. In fact, there was among even the twelve who were eating supper with Jesus every day and who were, who were even preaching His message. There was at least one of the twelve who was not on the narrow way, but who was on the broad way with the many that leads to destruction. So, wh what road are you on today? I mean, wh where, where are you headed? If you stay on the path that you're on right now, and you make no course correction, where will that lead you? Is it to life? Is the way you're on broad, or is the way you're on narrow? And who are your companions on that pathway? The, the, those are sober questions. And I hope that you listen to them in a sober way. And I hope that in asking those questions and in prodding your conscience about that and in poking at your heart, that you don't, you don't feel anything from me and from us together and asking that, but love. I have to ask you those kinds of questions because I love you. I, I have to poke at your conscience and I have to poke at your heart. And we've got to do that for each other be, because we, we want to be on the way. I want you to be on the way that leads to life, not on the road that goes to destruction. I, I said to you that uh, there are only two kinds of pedestrians. That there are those that are the few who are on the narrow way and there are the many that are on the broad way. But if we were to stop and talk to the pedestrians that are on the broad way 
if, if, if we were to be the man on the corner and we were to interview the people that are walking down Broadway that goes to destructions, even though there are only two kinds of pedestrians, as I said, uh, there, there are some subtle differences between people that are on Broadway. Uh, s- some folks that are on Broadway are naive. Um, maybe they have just started experimenting with the Broadway. Maybe they liked the neon lights. And it looks like the Broadway is fun. It, it, it could be that that, that they've been caught up in the naivete of being on a Broadway where there are no speed limits. I mean, where there's no posted signs that say you can only drive 35 here or you can only drive 45. When you are on the Broadway, you are on the Audubon. I mean, you can drive as fast and you can drive as hard as you want to. When you're on the Broadway, you can switch lanes anytime. I mean, you can drive fast in the slow lane if you want to or you can drive slow in the fast lane. When you are on the Broadway, I mean, it is well lit and it is well paved. There are no potholes on the Broadway. I mean, you can just go wide open as quick as you want to go. And the the Broadway is well lit. I mean, it's pretty. It goes through Las Vegas and it goes through Los Angeles and it goes right through the heart of New York City. I mean, it, it goes all the places that are fun, the Broadway does. It goes through every resort It passes through every fun-filled park. The Broadway is a lovely way from all appearances. And, and, And some people that are on the Broadway are naive. And when you talk to them about where they're going, they have no idea that at the that at the end of the Broadway there's destruction. And they'll argue with you about that. This isn't, this is, it's, it's going to be good in the end. You'll see. Oh, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go this way for a little while and then, and then I'll turn around. This is just while I'm young. It's just, it's just until I'm 18. Just, just until I'm 20 and, and, and I finish up my schooling and I get married and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to settle down. There, there, are, there are folks that are on the Broadway that are naive about where the Broadway leads. And naive about how the Broadway changes you because you don't stay the same when you're on the Broadway. The more mile markers you pass, the more exits that you neglect where you can get off and turn around, the, the, more, the more you see the lights ahead, ahead of you disappear over the abyss, I mean, go off the cliff, the more that you get seduced and the more that you get hardened by the Broadway, that there is no turning around or I don't want to turn around. Besides the naive people that are on the Broadway, there, there are some folks that are peddlers on the Broadway. There, there are people that are always hawking things on the Broadway. And it's, it, the evidence of that is, is abundant. You know, there, there, are, there are teams of people in businesses today, and Google is a big advocate of that, that are studying the things that you search when you're online. What, what, do, you, what do you Google? Well, there's somebody that knows the things that you Google. And because they know the things that you Google, they, they show you things over on the, the side of your browser that maybe you might want to take a look at. You Google about this, and so maybe you might want to take a look at that. Maybe you might want to go to this website. Maybe you might like to receive this in your email box. And we live in a society that is, that is specialized. I mean, there are all kinds of specialists in that very area that are looking for things to pop up in your browser. That, 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 that are showing you something that you might like to have a little more of. And there are all kinds of pop-up ads on the Broadway. There are all kinds of billboards that just that say 10 miles until the next stop and there you'll find something that's really fun. Let me show you a little bit of this and there's a lot more of that where that little bit came from. Try this and everything will be better or everything will be good or everything will be different. You'll be happy. And there are some folks that are on the Broadway that, that, are, that are like that, who are telling me, come on down the Broadway. Man, you look good in that. 
You, you are, you're awesome in what you're involved in. Isn't this fun? And so they're peddlers on the Broadway. And they're folks that will make you feel good about being on the path that leads to destruction, who will pat you on the back, who will pat you on the head, and who will make you feel dumb if you would ever think about turning around. Are you, are you silly? Why would you get off this road? It's fun on here. It's fast on here. Be, besides the naive and besides the peddlers that are on the Broadway, uh, there are also the pretenders. There, there, there are folks that are on the Broadway who act like they're on the narrow way. I, I mean, they dress up and they come to church and, they, and, and we sit together. The churches are full of folks that are on the Broadway but who pretend like they're on the narrow way. And maybe it feels, it, maybe it feels good to be with folks that are on the narrow way so that I don't feel guilty about the fact that I'm really on the Broadway. Or maybe I just don't want, I'm just not to the point yet in my travel down the Broadway that I want to say to folks that I just don't care. And so for now, I'm going to be on the Broadway. I'm going to live on the Broadway. I'm going to love on the Broadway, but I'm going to pretend like I'm on the narrow way. And so I'll put on a suit and I'll grab my Bible and I'll sing some songs and we'll hug each other and I'll feel warmth and I'll feel love and all of those kinds of things. And then tonight, when we go home and when it's dark and when no one sees and when no one knows and when no one's watching, I'll get on the train that goes to the Broadway and I'll ride all night and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll drink all night and I'll smoke all night and I'll do whatever I want to do all night and then tomorrow I'll go and, and, and bleary-eyed and I'll show back up and no, I, I'll think nobody knows where I've been. And the fact is that I can get away with being on the broad way and really and looking like I'm on the narrow way. I, I, I can get away with that for a little while. But one day I'll forget to take my beads off. I mean, one, one day I'll forget to take my earring out that shows where I've been. One, one day I'll forget to get the cans out from under the seat. One, one day I'll not clear my, my browser history of where I've been. One, one day there'll be a word that slips out that I, that I only would have heard on the Broadway that, that only would have been about the talk there. And if, it, if that never happens, if they never look under the seat, if they never look in my browser, if, if, if nobody ever checks my, in my top drawer to see what I've been hiding there or, or between the mattresses or wherever it is I'm hiding the stuff that I'm doing, that's, that's stuff from the Broadway. If nobody ever sees, folks, God sees. He sees. He knows what road I'm on. He knows the path that I trod, and I don't hide that from Him. Even if I hide it from you, I don't hide it from Him. And so the only pretending, the only thing that pretending accomplishes is just to, is just to blind myself to what is the inevitable result of the broad way. It leads to destruction. It always leads to destruction. It never leads to life. The broad way is a bad way. It always has been, it always will be, and it won't change for you. If you pretend long enough on the broad way, you become like another pedestrian on the broad way. And that's the fellow that just doesn't care. If you travel long enough on the Broadway, it won't matter to you anymore that it leads to destruction. In fact, you can travel long enough on the Broadway that you really begin to think that this is as good as it gets. And you might even get to where you're glad about this is as good as it gets. 
that, that maybe, maybe over the hill, when I see that the, 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 the taillights of the person that just went off the cliff, maybe over the hill is not a cliff at all. Maybe over the cliff is a tub of butter. I mean, maybe over the cliff, maybe over the cliff is a big, is, is a big bungee cord that's just going to rescue me. Maybe over the cliff is this fun free fall and I just land in this net of paradise. You, you can be on the Broadway long enough that you can think, you can begin to believe that the Broadway really is the good way. It is the good life. So that you just don't care about the voices that warn you otherwise. I, I have... I've been preaching long enough to know that, that, you, that folks can turn my voice off. And listen, you don't have to hear me preach to go to heaven. I mean, it, you, it, 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 you, don't, you don't have to hear the truth that I, the, the, the truths that I tell. But, but I, I want to warn us about the fact that we can get tired of hearing the voices that say, Stop. Look, what are, that ask the questions, where, where are you going? That say, I, I love you, turn around. Being on the Broadway can make us hard to that. We, be, we just become aggressive drivers. We get this road rage that we're not going to let anyone tell us how to drive. We're not going to let anyone tell us how to go. It's just pedal to the metal and our, and our fist on the wheel. And we are going to go our way. I don't know. I, the, 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 don't care, the don't care crowd, is, those are tough nuts to crack. It's hard to break through to the folks that say, I don't care. And so you can, you can poke out your lip. And you can look at the floor. And you can pooch out your chin. And you can set your brow. And you can make your face hard as if you don't care. And, and, and all you do, all you do is just is solidify your own destiny when you do that. One day you will care. One day when we stand before the throne of God, and we all will. And it won't be, folks, it won't be you and me. It won't be us together. It will, we will one by one stand before the throne of God. And, and, and we will give an answer for, for, for what way we've been on, what road we've traveled. And, and I say that to you because I love you. I, I want the Lord to know you when you stand before Him. I'd want you to not be afraid. But the don't care crowd is going to be afraid. There's another pedestrian on the Broadway. And uh, this, is, this is one I run into a lot. It, it's the crowd that says, I want to get out of the ditch, but I don't want to get off the way. I mean, if you, if you, ride on, if you drive on the Broadway long enough, you're going to end up in the ditch. I mean, someone's going to run you off the road, or you're going to drive inebriated, uh, or you're going to wander into a tree when you travel the broad way. And, and, and uh, you need to thank God for this. You need to thank God that you need to thank the Lord that he does things that run us off the road and that cause us to fall into the ditch and that we, that we run into trees. Because God loves us enough that he lets us suffer. He lets us experience some consequences from riding along the broad way in, in hopes that it'll turn us around. But But... But sometimes, sometimes we don't learn from our experiences. Sometimes we don't learn the right, the right lessons from our experiences. We may learn something, but, but what, what we learn is something like, well, well, look at what God did to me. If God really loved me, he wouldn't do this. I, I tried to do the right thing one time, and then this happened, and so I'm just going gonna, gonna to get back on the expressway. Lots of folks run into ditches. And when they run into the ditches, they call. And they say, would you, I, I, would you help me get out of the ditch? I have learned my lesson. 
I am not going to do that anymore. I want to be better. I want to be different. I'm going to come to church. I want to be around good people. I, 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 I want, I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start coming to class. I, I, want, to, I want to start getting together with some other guys. I, I, I'm, I, I want to start being around people that will, that will help me do the right thing. I really love God. And they, Listen, you can parrot all the right things. You can say all the right words when you're in the ditch. But some folks that want to get out of the ditch don't want to get off the way. In fact, I will say to you, just be, and it comes from the, the Lord Himself, if there are many, 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 He says, that are on the broad way and few that find the narrow way, it means that most of the folks who, who cry about being in the ditch don't want to get off the road. They don't want to get off the path. And so you've got to be really honest with yourself when you're in the ditch. You've got to make the decision, where are you going to go from here? Are you just going to change the tire and get back on the freeway? Or are you going to change the tire and turn the car around? And let's get back on the good path. Let's get back on the right path. Lots of folks on the Broadway. One out of the ditch, but they don't want off the road. I lived on Cave Creek Road in uh, East Tennessee. You'd never find it. You'd never find Cave Creek. If you're driving between Knoxville and Nashville, going one way or the other, on curvy Highway 70, there's a, there's a, there's a curve in the road. And there's not even a sign there. For Cave Creek. There used to be a sign that said Cave Creek Community Center, but the sign got worn and dilapidated, and I think it's gone now. But if you turn down Cave Creek, uh, you'll, you'll come across another little road. It's Old Dogwood Shores, and my friend Junior, he's really Arthur Russell III, but nobody is Arthur Russell III in Tennessee who doesn't want to get beat up, you know. So he, he's Junior, <laughs> Junior. So Junior was one of my friends growing up, and Junior lived on Old Dogwood Road. And Mom would let me ride my bicycle over to see Junior. And it didn't matter which way you rode to go to Junior's house, you had to ride uphill. Because he lived on the ridge that was parallel to where we lived, and so you either could go down Cave Creek and get on Old Dogwood and ride up to, to Junior's house, or you could ride up Cave Creek to Highway 70, and then you could coast down Highway 70 the rest of the way to Junior's house. Um, so either way, you had to ride uphill. But if you rode up to Highway 70, and then you coasted from there, it was a gentler hill. It was longer. It was longer to go that way, but it was easier to go that way. And the road up Cave Creek and down Highway 70, I mean, was, it was always well-paved. It was well-maintained. Uh, it was easier to go that way. It was harder to go down Cave Creek and get on old Dogwood Road that never got repaved. It always had potholes. And it was steep. It was a steep hill. Uh, I could ride all the way up Cave Creek. The, the first time I rode up Cave Creek, I could ride all the way up Cave Creek. But when I rode down, when I rode, rode down, old, rode up old Dogwood, I always had to get up and push my bike because it was so steep. It was a hard way. Mom wouldn't let me ride down Highway 70. I had to go the hard way. I had to go up Old Dogwood. Even though it was easier to ride on Highway 70. Why do you, why do you reckon that was the case? Why didn't she let me go on Highway 70? Well, Highway 70 wasn't safe for a little boy on his Murray 10-speed you get run over on Highway 70, there were, there were some sharp curves and some people came around the corners fast because it was the highway and they drove fast on the highway. There wasn't a good shoulder. So mom didn't want me to get hurt. So I, had, I rode, she told me to ride the hard way even though I had to push, even though I had to get off my bike, even though there were potholes. She loved me. And so she wanted me to go the hard way because it was the best way. Listen, folks. Go the hard way. Go the narrow way. 
don't go the Broadway. Broadway is bad. If you're on Broadway today, turn around. Turn around. Repent of going down Broadway. Turn around. Don't just pull over. Get off the road. Turn around. If you're on Broadway, if you're on Broadway, learn God's way. Learn His way. If you're on Broadway, get in the book and find out what, where God wants you to go. If you don't know the way, ask directions. I mean, let's talk. Let's talk. Let me share with you what I can share with you about, about the good way, about the narrow way. And if you're not comfortable talking with me, there are a whole room full of folks that you can talk to about the narrow way. Come get help. Ask directions. Find God's way. If you're on the Broadway today, turn around. Ask for help. I mean, learn God's way. Do that, would you? If you're on the broad way, get on the narrow way and let's stick together. Let's stick together. One of the things that helps me on the narrow way is being with people that are on the narrow way. I know, I see one of the danger signs when someone is getting on the broad way. They don't want to be around me anymore. They, they, they don't want to talk to me. They, they, don't, they can't look me in the eye. Uh, have you experienced that from people that you love that, that, are, that, are, that are taking a detour? I mean, they, they avoid you, right? And that's so counter to what I need. I need to be together with people that are on the narrow way. I need to confess my sin. I need for them to shine light on my path. I, I need to hold hands with them. I need, to, I need to stick together with you. When I am alone, when I am walking by myself, and I don't let, and I don't let my brothers and sisters into my life, it's so easy to get back on the broad way. And, 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 and I've got lots of friends there, but they don't love me. They just use me. My real friends, the people that love me, are the people that are on the narrow way, just like my mom. If you're on the broad way today, turn around, learn his way, stick together. And then let's go to that land, shall we? Jen and I were talking to the neighbors across the street last night. Uh, Mr. Pat, Miss Linda, and uh, Miss Linda's a cancer survivor. And so she was uh, telling us that next weekend, next Saturday, a lot of her family are coming. And she asked us if we wanted to come over uh, uh, in the, uh, around noontime because they're all going to do the race for the cure. And, uh, and then they're going to come to, back to their house afterwards. And um, I was thinking about that this morning, about uh, the race for the cure and about the road, the path that we're on. Everyone here who is on the narrow way, everyone here who is on the narrow way is a Broadway survivor, you know? I've been on the Broadway. And you have too. I've stopped at the carnival along the way. I've seen the sideshows. I've ridden the roller coaster. I've been into all those pretty dives that you see along the Broadway. 
I'm a survivor of the Broadway. But I am on the race for the cure. I don't want the cancer of sin. And just like Miss Linda across the street, I mean, I I want to raise awareness about the Broadway. And we don't need any, we don't need anybody in the, we don't need anyone in the cancer centers. I mean, we don't want, we don't need anyone doing research in order to figure out the cure. God has a cure. I'm here to tell you today that there is a cure to the Broadway. I mean, there is an answer. There is a way to go where there is healing, where there is life. Get on, get on the race for the cure. Get on the narrow way, would you? Get off the broad way, would you? And come go to that land where there is life, where there is God, where we see His face. If you're on the Broadway today, there ain't nobody here that's going to look down on you because we are all survivors. If you, especially if you're ready to get off the roller coaster, if you're ready to get off the road, if you're ready to get on the way, then come. Come. Come and go with us. Come and go with us to that land. Come and let's find, let's find life. Come and let's get healed. Come and, and, and let, let's, let's go where God has, has, has set for us to go. Come, won't you? As we stand and as we sing.